Hey everyone, Jen O'Sullivan here, and we're going to be going over a little bit of a controversial topic. I want to give you a little bit of a second to kind of say hello, um, use the next couple minutes just to kind of give a shout out to uh, your friends, to your team. I love to see who's on here. Um, I also love putting oils on. One of the things that I think people don't know I do, some people do, I think you guys are hearing this more and more often, is I will take uh, sacred sandalwood or... I will take Royal Hawaiian sandalwood. It takes a little bit to drip out. I just let it drip, okay? So you don't have to sit there and like <laughs> go crazy on it. Uh, it's a thicker oil. And I actually, as a speaker, I love putting this right on my throat. So right here. Because what happens for speakers is we get these funny kind of craggly voices. Um, <clears throat> and it's really funny because I will, right before I go on, like inhale water by accident and be like, oh no, <clears throat> you know? So this is an interesting thing to help just kind of calm your um, your throat. And I'm also an introvert. I don't know that many of you guys know that. Um, so I'm sort of nervous sometimes when I do talks, especially this one, <laughs> okay? And I, I'm, I'm curious if any of you guys know why I'm a little nervous about this one. Okay, so uh, give a shout out. And I just put Sacred Sandalwood on. So you guys that watch the replay will get all of my pre-stuff, but I do know that Facebook has a little delay, uh, and so that's always trying to help <laughs> introverts unite, exactly, uh, alone at home. <laughs> right? my, uh, my friend uh, Jade says that. She's like, introverts unite alone, together, alone, at home. <laughs> so anyhow, I've got my, my new Young Living water bottle. Um, Life Science Publishing came out with these this summer, so I'm super excited about this. Uh, I have lemon and peppermint vitality in here, okay? Okay, so why am I a little nervous about this video? Um, I don't, as much as I'm a red, right, we kind of joke, some of you guys uh, know we kind of talk about our colors, so there's red, blue, yellow, green. I'm going to give you the quick rundown and I want you to, with hearts, tell me who you think you are. So, um, I'm a fierce red, okay, but I have some yellow in me too uh, because I get sort of nervous about things and I get my feelings hurt sometimes. You know, we're human, uh, you know, we, we're not robots. So, uh, basic, again, I'm going to give you a bunch of fun information today and so before we dive in, I want you to kind of consider what your color is. If you already know, use hearts to tell us what your colors are. So, I would put red green for me because I have green kind of as my secondary color. So I put a red heart with a green heart. Um, but reds are very fiery, <laughs> right? So I'm a visual learner. So I look at reds are fiery. They're determined. Sometimes they're very arrogant. Sometimes they're not teachable. They want to do, the, do it their way. Uh, so to find a teachable red is actually a really good thing. Uh, <laughs> so reds are the ones that don't really need to be told what to do. They tend to talk really fast and really loud. <laughs> Okay, so whenever I do the tests, I score in the 80s or 90s on red and in the teens on all the other colors. It's pretty sad. So I'm learning to balance out a little bit more and learn how to calm down and be quieter. Uh, blues, blues tend to be sometimes loud too because they're your partiers, but they are the people who just love people. They love being outdoors. They're often more creative. So oftentimes they'll get caught up in the right side of their brain and forget what time it is. So blues are often late, <laughs> right? So we, we like to, um, I'm gonna put this on too. This is my lavender, lemon, and peppermint roller. So blues are uh, funny because they don't necessarily get along with reds too much because reds are just like, they just want to keep moving forward and get things done and they're kind of, they don't want to waste time. Whereas blues love, it's not wasting time to them. To them it's like, let's just hang out and enjoy life and let's go on a hike and just enjoy nature, right? So you know who you are. And blues are great people. They're the ones that are super fun, <laughs> okay? Uh, reds don't tend to be super fun. So uh, then you've got greens. And some of you guys are greens because a lot of greens follow me. They're the researchers. They're the ones that like an like to analyze things. They like charts and graphs and <laughs> they like to know the science behind why. You guys also, as greens, don't comment too much. You might say hi because that's an easy thought out thing, but you won't comment too often on like big things because you want to mull it over. You want to make sure that your comment is a good comment and a well thought out comment, right? 
Greens also have a hard time actually doing something, right? Because you feel like you want to know everything. You want to you want to become an aromatherapist before you share oils, right? That kind of thing. Uh, so it's interesting because the greens really, really do their research. <laughs> so those are good analytical people to have around. Uh, yellows, I oh, so the coloring, right? Blue, blue sky, kind of like head in the clouds, loves the outdoors, that whole thing. Red, fiery red. Um, greens, grass, they like the data, they like to get down to the nit nitty gritty of things, so I look at them as like grass, looking in the grass. Um, and then our yellows are like a yellow lab, or a golden retriever, right? They're the people people, they love people, they love helping people, um, but almost to a fault, right? You're the ones that get walked all over, you're the ones that like get your feelings hurt all the time and you take everything personally. But the cool thing about you guys is you are the best cheerleaders. You guys are the most loving, the most compassionate. Um, and you're like that, the, the, the mother hens, right? <laughs> so, so it's so great because so many of us can kind of fall into multiple categories. Uh, some of us are super even. I know some of you guys are like straight up, you know, 50-50 on everything, <laughs> so you're like the chameleons, so if you want to put that little uh, emoji of a chameleon, that would be you, but many of us will have a, a primary and then a secondary. Okay, I bet you didn't know you were going to get a quick lecture on uh, colors, but I think it's fun, and I love seeing your hearts, so share your hearts about who you think you are, um, and that's probably the fastest, best, easiest explanation you'll ever hear on the colors. Uh, and it helps us learn how to talk to people, right? Because yellows want us to kind of slow our roll, right? Yellows have a hard time because they're like, just slow down, right? So on a video, it's fine, but in person, it's yellows are like, can you, can you like take it down a notch <laughs> right? and just slow down? So it's really funny to be able to know, okay, I love to be able to talk to people. So yeah, it's pretty funny and pretty accurate. All right. So, I put my oils on. I hope you guys put your oils on too. I would love to see what oils you guys are using today. Um, anyone want to try and take a guess as to what's in there? Uh, so, you know, I've got lavender, lemon, and peppermint on me, behind my ears, on my skull, down my jawline. This is an everyday occurrence for me, multiple times during the day. I've got sacred sandalwood right on my throat. I can already feel it, totally fine. I had like a funny little tickle right before I came. I love breathing in that stuff. I'm going to put on some Journey because it's my favorite. Look at this stuff. How cool is this stuff, right? All right. <laughs> I know. You're like, get to it, Jen. I normally don't do this, but this is a little bit bigger of a thing. So we are, I don't know how many minutes in, but if somebody wants to share how many minutes in so we can know that we're getting started right now. All right. You guys are so good. I know. Seasonal trio. Yay. <laughs> okay. If you're watching this replay, thanks for bearing with me. Um, just wanted to kind of say hello to everybody. And again, we normally don't do that, but just wanted to get on here and give a little time for me to wake up too. It's 10 o'clock in the morning for me, and I don't normally do videos this early. So I'm actually kind of still asleep. I know, I, my mornings are always super quiet. Uh, and I love that. I love that about my life. Uh, I can kind of do what I want when I want. Okay, so the cool thing to me about this talk <laughs> And why I was a little nervous about it is because of the sheer volume of anger when I posted the coffee may be killing you image. So many, this, this proves my point right here and this is why. So many people take things right at face value. They're not even willing to dig one sentence deeper, okay? This is, again, a very interesting thing to me because not only did I say, I did not say coffee is killing you. I said coffee may be killing you, first of all. I also, in the post, didn't, I just said coffee was one item <laughs> that we're talking about today. And so what was so fascinating to me was to see the sheer aggressive behavior on both of my posts, right? Because I posted one here on my author page and one over at the Human Body and Essential Oils. And I'm not kidding you. I mean, the, 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 the claws were coming out and people were like, mm -mm. like clearly you don't like coffee. And people were posting studies showing that coffee is good for you. I mean, I'm just going to, you know, call a spade a spade. That's addictive behavior. <laughs> okay. When you are aggressively you know, trying to kind of make your stance known and like, you're not taking my coffee away from me and let me prove to you why. That, it, it's, it's hard, right? Because I, I understand, like I do. And I used to drink coffee in college like it was like going out of style. 
I understand the um, issue here. And you'll even go so far as to say, I'm not addicted to coffee. Straight up, not. And some people even said, everyone's different. I actually used to, coffee used to not be my friend and now I have to drink it every day because it actually helps me with certain things. Okay, so let's understand something first. When you start citing anything, anything, even coffee is bad for you, right? I want you to, when you're looking at anything, whether it be somebody's post, because I can't tell you how many times I get sent to me posts about some hypey thing, like essential oils will cause you to like blow up your head, right? And you'll see pictures of crazy rashes, but you didn't actually read the entire article, right? Or you read the article but didn't check who it's from, right? I love some of these. I love some of these articles that some of you guys sent me because if you read just slightly deeper, you'll notice that the article was written from the Coffee Association, right? It's like, of course they're going to say that coffee uh, decreases the morbidity rate in humans because they're trying to sell the stuff. So... I want to look at what's called gold standard studies and every time somebody sends me a study I'm sort of like okay but did you read it because I don't think you did because I did and I read it and read the cited sources and read you know all of it. we can prove anything is true in this world literally I can prove the earth is flat <laughs> and have cited sources and so I just part of the thing right part of the thing that breaks my heart and I'm talking is my why, the why that makes me cry, is I was super gullible. I believed everything. I, I, was, I was like, of course the grocery stores don't want to murder me. Of course the food that I'm eating is good for me if it's sold to me. Of course the products that I'm using on my face and my makeup are healthful for me. They're, they're surely not killing me, right? These were all things that I assumed until I started reading labels, until I started digging one sentence deeper, and I started to realize that's not the case at all. They put all sorts of things in our products that are straight up so bad for us. So now while I could sit here and do a video that will be all on coffee, and by the way, I am going to, not today, but I could do an entire video explaining every single thing. The thing that I would rather do, though, is have you research it. And rather than you research it from a, I'm going to prove her wrong, I would love for you to be the devil, be your own devil's advocate, right? Actually go in and type in, you know, coffee, endocrine disruptor. Coffee, bad for you, right? You know, actual ingredients in coffee. I would love for you to actually do that. Those of you that say like, oh, organic, it's fine. It's really not, okay? But again, I want you to do that research. And the reason for it, when you look at your endocrine system, I am not talking about, you know, when one of you guys posted about that more, you know, the 5 million studies, there's 5 million people that they'd followed over like many, many years. Um, think about that for a second. They don't do gold standard studies with 5 million people. It's impossible. Uh, because there's too many factors in play. So when you when you look at, and I answered back, it's a social thing, right? Most likely. There is actual gold standard studies to prove that humans who interact with each other have a much lower mor mor morbidity rate. That is actually the, the thing that causes the least amount of death. Like if you are antisocial and stay holed up in your, in your home all the time, you most likely will die sooner than the rest of us. And that is actually a proven fact, that social the social behavior of humans will actually help you live longer or not live as long. So when you look at coffee, oftentimes it's a social behavior. There's coffee house on every single corner. So even you physically going to a coffee house as an introvert, hanging out there, you're around humans. That actually is healthy for you. Uh, in a big way. So that's why I said that because we don't know what the social behavior patterns were for 5 million people <laughs> that they studied, right? So again, I want you to think about logically how can these things kind of interact with each other? How do we know for certain if that's true? Is it written from an addict's perspective trying to justify their 
thing, right? And, and you can. You can find any number of research that states that it's better for you, gives you weight loss, and then you can also find that it causes ob obesity, right? So, so that's the frustrating thing. And so one comment was made that we are all different. And that's true, right? Gluten is not the same in you as it is in me. Gluten radically disrupts my endocrine system. Uh, it might not yours, although it might and you don't know it. That's what's interesting. They, they've estimated that 85% of the population is living as a gluten intolerant person and they don't know it because there's so many potential side effects from gluten that you might not know. You might have adult acne and the simple removing of gluten from your diet will clear it up, right? Or you might have real funky uh, menstrual cycles. The simple pulling away of gluten might cause you to be fine. You might have all sorts of random endocrine disrupting issues that not you don't even know, like you might have rage. All right, so let's just kind of get into what we want to, um, what we want to, what I want to sort of prove to you. And this is where it gets kind of interesting. Uh, do you know what your endocrine system is? Okay. And your endocrine system is really important. And I've been talking about this a lot lately because I feel like this is the the foundation for our terrain. And when I talk about terrain mapping, so my book French Aromatherapy has a whole section on terrain mapping. It's kind of like a pot, right? I've got a bunch of potted plants in my backyard. Some of them aren't doing well. I pulled one out the other day and noticed it was completely root bound. That means the soil from which it is pulling from is slim, right? There's not much in there because the roots have taken over, okay? So to understand the simple repotting of a plant, and now that plant will thrive, right? I can't know, you know, I can see something on the leaves and it just doesn't look right, but until I actually dig down into the soil and check out the roots, I'm not gonna actually be able to know actually what's happening. And so oftentimes when we're trying to figure out our own issues, we are topically adding things onto us, thinking like, we need to fix it, we need to fix it. So it's it's sort of like shining the leaves of a dead tree, okay? It's really not gonna help. You need to look at your roots. You need to look at your own soil. What's going on inside of you that could be causing external issues? And external issues come in all shapes and sizes. So let's talk about those real quick. And I want you to just raise your hand when I say one that you're dealing with. Some of you will have 20 hands raised, right? <laughs> I'm not gonna go over 20 things, but there's multiple things. So how many of you guys are dealing with inflammation, like major inflammation in your body? How many of you guys are dealing with um, funny weird rashes on your body, like actual eczema, you might have psoriasis, right? Str really dry skin. Um, how many of you guys are dealing with obesity, meaning you actually can't lose weight. You're having a really hard time and you've tried everything, right? It's not like you're not trying. You're trying and your metabolism seems like it's fighting you, right? So that's another thing. What about those of you guys who have emotional like trauma? And why I say trauma is it's always something with you. You're always freaking out about something, whether you're super anxious like anxiety is huge in your life, or you're depressed all the time, and a lot of these are interwoven, which means you'll have multiples of them, uh, or you get bouts of mania where you're like, woohoo, woohoo, let's go, let's go, like like party, 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 you just want to like hang out with people and you're so excited, and then you just want to sleep for days. Um, how many of you guys are dealing with really intense emotional trauma where you're crying all the time, where um, I remember for one full year I was crying all the time and I broke all of the little blood vessels under here. After a year of crying, I literally was looking in the mirror going, what? And it took probably two years to heal. I still have some broken ones here. And it's interesting when, when I have been there, right? I have been there with all of these things. And it's crazy to me because it's not just this. How many of you guys are dealing with like rapid hair loss or you're dealing with a, a actually tanked libido? There's no more libido. It's just gone. Bye bye. <laughs> right? Um, uh, what about if you guys are dealing with any straight up anger, right? Rage, displaced anger syndrome. Um, you're dealing with like straight up you can feel the fire in your fingers, right? You feel that rage just fire through your body. I mean, I, I know it's it's kind of like, you know, your husband or your wife says something to you and you just like have to walk away, <laughs> right? Because it's just, you can feel it. It's like this chemical surge in your body. 
Um, how many of you guys are dealing with simple things like exhaustion? You actually have a real hard time waking up in the morning. Um, you need your coffee, right? So again, this isn't a talk about coffee, but we're going to talk about m multiple things. How many of you guys are literally like dragging through the day? Um, some of you guys are dragging all day long and then at 7 p.m. you like wake up and you're like, I could like run a marathon right now. It's like, and then you have a real hard time getting to sleep. You have insomnia, your brain is moving kind of crazy at night. And then your sleep patterns at night are super bad, like super bad, where it's just on again, off again, and nothing works, right? That's the interesting thing. You probably were told, try this oil, and you're like, it doesn't work, right? Some of you guys, things work for, and you're like, oh, thank you. But sometimes you're like, that's just not working, okay? So when you start to look at your life and things that could potentially be blocking things from working, we look at things like the alkalinity of your body. What in your body uh, could be fighting against any helpful thing, right? So a helpful thing would be what you know is helpful, right? Exercise, eating right, um, you know, doing things like essential oils or Ninja Red, certain supplements that you know would be better for you, uh, sleeping better. If you're not sleeping good, you know you just need a good night's sleep. <clears throat> like there's all sorts of things that you know are healthy for you, but um, those seem to not be working. And that's mostly seen in people that are having a hard time losing weight. They're like, I'm eating so well and nothing is coming off. Okay, so let's talk about these blockers. Uh, blockers are endocrine disruptors, okay? And so when we understand our endocrine system, our endocrine system drives everything I just talked about, okay? Libido, sleep, wake up patterns, your energy levels during the day, your ability to focus, that whole brain fog thing. Um, it, it actually drives your metabolism, <laughs> weight loss. Uh, it drives all of your emotions, right? So your endocrine system is one of the most, if not the most, important functions in your entire body, <laughs> okay? Uh, forget about everything else. Like, you can help your immune system, fine. If you're not helping your endocrine system, you're just gonna be in a whole world of, of mess. And so why I say coffee may be killing you, it's not just coffee. There are so many things that could be blocking your endocrine from doing its job. And many of us blame our thyroid, we blame, you know, our adrenals, you know, you blame, like, you blame your libido, which would be blaming your, you know, testes in men and ovaries in women, like, they're just not producing properly. But it's us. It's us that's tanking our endocrine system. And some of us don't even know it. And that's where it gets really frustrating. And so, okay, let's just determine what we know about endocrine disruptors. Okay, so I'm going to read to you an actual study done by the Endocrine Society. They titled it Endocrine Disrupting Chemicals, an Endocrine Society Scientific <clears throat> Statement. Okay, so this is, uh, this is from them. There is a growing interest in the possible health threat posed by endocrine disrupting chemicals. They call them EDCs, okay? Which are substances in our environment, food, and consumer products that interfere with hormone biosynthesis, okay, hormone biosynthesis is your endocrine system, metabolism, or action resulting in deviation from normal homeostatic control or reproduction, okay, so that's all our endocrine system, all of that. So basically they're saying substances in our environment, our food, and our products are interfering with our endocrine system, okay, just put it plainly. Okay. In this first scientific statement of the Endocrine Society, we present the evidence that endocrine disruptors, okay, endocrine disruptors have effects on male and female reproduction, breast development and cancer, prostate cancer, neuroendocrinology, thyroid, metabolism and obesity, and cardiovascular endocrinology. Results from animal models, human clinical observations and endomeological studies and end uh, endomeological studies i'm not sure if i pronounce that right converge to implicate edc's endocrine disrupting right so endocrine disrupting chemicals as a significant concern to public health okay so when you start to understand that an endocrine disrupting chemicals represent a broad class okay and Endocrine disruptors represent a broad class of molecules, okay, such as 
pesticides, industrial chemicals, plastics, plasticizers, fuels, and many other chemicals that are present in the environment or are in widespread use. Okay, if that's not enough to induce a crazy amount of fear in you, I don't know how else to help you, <laughs> okay? So, if you look at, again, at known endocrine size, uh, disruptors, synthetic chemicals, petrochemicals, plastics, fire retardants. I know I mentioned memory foam. You guys, that is a, like that's a plastic, <laughs> okay? So I know some of you guys are like, don't take my memory foam away. You don't have to, and, and we're gonna get into why you don't have to stop drinking coffee. You don't have to get rid of your memory foam. But I wanna explain to you guys kind of the, the overall overarching issue here. Okay, so again, this is from the Endocrine Society, health consequences of endocrine disruptors, hormone issues, obesity, reproductive issues, like if you're having trouble getting pregnant, uh, breast development, breast cancer, mental health issues, depression, all of that, you know, rage, all sorts of mental health issues, thyroid issues, cardiovascular issues, neurological disorders, and prostate cancer. Like, what? <laughs> it's, it's enough to kind of make us feel a little bit unsettled about what are we putting on and in our bodies. Like I said, I have a real hard time with, um, with figuring out like, okay, what should I be doing? What shouldn't I be doing? What are the things that are damaging me? What are the things I can control, right? Because some things we can't control. Some of you live under power lines, and those are endocrine disrupting as well, right? This, these EMFs that are constantly raining down on us. So if I can clean up my body, right, if I can actually look at everything that I'm doing <clears throat> and clean up as much as I possibly can, that's going to be a better a better um, thing for me. Now, you don't need to live in a bubble, right? And I think that that's where some of us start feeling like, I'm just gonna throw my hands up and just forget about it, okay? So what I'd like to do is if you can get a notebook out, I'm gonna give you a couple minutes, get a notebook out, a piece of, a piece of paper, a pencil, something like that. Um, I wanna help you guys to understand some of the, the things that you can, you can help, okay? And some of the ways that we can actually get through all of this stuff. Um, like for instance, just to give you, a, just to help you out a little bit, um, yeah, organic coffee is better for you. But here's the problem when it comes to even just organic coffee: uh, you're introducing to your body, right? So let's just say some of you guys use the the idea that you know coffee's from nature. <laughs> well, so are so many other things that are addictive, and um, you know you're not going to sit there and smoke pot all day long. It's from nature. You know, you could claim that, but we all know that uh, pot kills brain cells too, after a while, like of too much use. So then you'll claim like, well, I can drink one cup, right? Fine, you can, okay? I'm not taking away your coffee. I would like you to understand something that's really specific though. Every single person, and it's been hundreds now to date, because I've been talking about coffee for probably two and a half years. I have more people come up to me and mention on Facebook that they took my challenge and did the 30 days of no coffee and it's been life changing for them, all right? Uh, if you claim that coffee helps your migraines, let me help you out here. I had extraordinarily bad migraines and I claimed the same thing until I rid my entire body of ca caffeine and I don't get migraines anymore, not at all. It runs in our family. My sister gets them. My cousin massively got them, so much so, and she worked, she was a barista, uh, and she wouldn't give up her coffee, but she got her entire uterus removed, and she still gets migraines. You think it's not coffee? Uh, it runs in our family. My sister won't stop her one cup of coffee, and she swears that it helps her, <clears throat> but I can tell you for a fact, the migraine thing, stopping it, it's because the coffee is, is opening up the blood vessels, but it's <clears throat> doing so in a kind of a false way, right? That means you're dependent on it to do so. So anytime we take something that our body becomes dependent on, uh, you're never, you're, you're now an addict. You're never going to get off of it. So, because if you get off of it, all the things that it was helping you for come crashing down on you. So this is a crutch. So you use it as a crutch. Uh, the thing about it is that if you claim, okay, I can, I can do one cup a day, 
what is happening is, is you are blocking your endocrine system from doing its job. Now, yes, it's gonna take some time for you to get off of it, and it's not gonna be pretty. It will be like you're a heroin addict going through withdrawal. Uh, so some of you guys are like, no, thank you, <laughs> okay? And that's okay, but I want you to understand that you're blocking cortisol production, okay? So people say, but I will never be able to wake up in the morning. Again, that's your, your the addict self telling you, don't go off coffee. Because what will happen is, over time of you Coming down off of your addiction, coming down even even if you're just doing one cup a day, even if you're just doing de decaf, okay, this is very important to understand, there's still caffeine in decaf. Pull yourself off of it, change out the routine. In the EOBAR app, there's a full on how to get rid of coffee, like regimen, <laughs> okay? It's also in the French Aromatherapy book. But what will happen is your endocrine system will wake up. It, it's it's asleep right now. Like literally, your ability to produce cortisol uh, is blocked. When you wake up in the morning, when you see blue light from the sun, when you breathe in oxygen, drink water, right? Those things, water oxygenates your cells. The blue light triggers cortisol. Cortisol often gets the bad rap of being a flight or fight syndrome, like that that chemical that's your stress hormone. Uh, yes, some of you guys are dealing with major stress, major anxiety, but guess what? You're drinking coffee in the morning, maybe two, three cups, maybe just one, and you are noticing your cortisol levels are jacked, and you are just, you, you know, jittery, you're freaking out, like you get anxiety, and then you're super exhausted. You have what's called adrenal fatigue where you're just, your adrenals have overproduced cortisol and now they're not working anymore. So the glands are just like overdone, they're, they've had it. The coffee is blocking those adrenals from doing their job right because it's a false indicator to your body that you have energy. It's a false source of energy. And so when you introduce that false source of en energy, your endocrine system says, oh, she's good. I don't need to give her any thing for it. We're good. So you now become dependent on it, okay? It's the same thing at night, right? When you're trying to go to sleep, your endocrine system is jacked, so it's not producing melatonin anymore. It's like, ah, oh, she's got it. She's got to figure it out. She's taking melatonin or she's taking her sleeping pill or whatever she's doing. And so our body becomes dependent on it. Now I know that they will claim non-habit forming, right? But you're still blocking your endocrine system from doing its job. <laughs> so so that's, I just wanted to help you understand that that is a very clear way to really understand how we might be blocking our system from creating, producing the chemicals in our body that's needed for us to operate properly, <laughs> okay? Um, and. Some of you will straight up say, I, I need to take coffee, I'm okay on coffee, keep your coffee, okay? Keep it. I'm just trying to help you understand that it is doing other harm that you may not notice. You may, you ha may have to choose to say, I'm okay with that side effect as opposed to this side effect, right? And again, that's okay. Uh, I, I am horrified at the ads lately that are getting worse and worse. They're now saying that now these pharmaceutical companies are having to claim that these are only some of the major side effects. They're actually saying that on the commercials now. And, you know, I wonder, okay, is that person who has you know, maybe just tingly sensation or pain in their feet, you know, whatever they've got going on, are they okay with all those side effects? Like, what's worse? That's how I look at it, right? What's worse? The side effects or the what I'm dealing with? And with, with what I'm dealing with, I can look at what else could I be doing that would be blocking my body from operating properly? Again, I'm not a doctor, but I would love for you guys to take stock. So you guys should all have your pen and paper by now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over a little test, and then I'm gonna read to you the analysis. So you're going to um, write one through 10, okay? You're gonna give yourself 10 spices, and you're going to write a, a number next to each item, okay? So number one is I want you to write down, um, you're not gonna write down how often you exercise per week, but I'm gonna give you some numbers associated with the number of times that you work out each week. Okay, so how often do you exercise per week? Uh, exercise is considered 30 or more minutes per day, 
all right so if you're just doing a 10 minute whatever you got to add those 10 minutes up if you're doing like really intense 10 minutes you can count it if you want I'm just trying to help you help you I want you to be as honest with yourself as possible so about 30 minutes a day how many times a week are you doing seven or more times a week some of you guys are workout junkies uh, you're gonna give yourself 10 points for question number one if you're doing six times a week give yourself nine points if you're doing five times a week give yourself eight points if you're doing four times a week seven points three times is six points two times is five points and if you're doing one workout a week give yourself four points <clears throat> if you're doing zero times per week you get zero <laughs> okay okay how many so number two how many hours of sleep do you get per night um, if you're getting nine hours of sleep per night you're actually supposed to be getting nine hours of sleep it's eight to nine but nine hours is actually a really good sweet spot for most people and I know most people will tell you eight hours of sleep per night but many of you guys won't actually get that because it takes you 30 minutes to actually fall asleep and then you're, you're not like waking up like right away so we say nine is a better judgment call so if you're getting a good nine hours of sleep like you go to bed at 10 a.m. and wake up nine hours later um, and again you don't have to fall asleep right at 10 but like if your bedtime is 10 and you fall asleep within about a half an hour give yourself nine hours um, that's 10 points okay okay so <laughs> uh, if you're getting eight hours of sleep you're gonna give yourself eight points if you're giving um, getting seven hours of sleep you're gonna give yourself six points six hours per night sorry not per week per night is four points <clears throat> and then five is three four hours per night would be two and if you're only getting three hours of sleep per night, you're giving yourself one point. If you get less than three hours of sleep per night, that's really bad. Anyways, all of that would be really bad. But that's the, the down, down play, okay? So again, nine would be ten. Eight is eight. Seven, you get six points for, okay? So and so on. Okay, number three. How many ounces of water do you drink per day? Okay, so just to put it in perspective, a gallon per day for most of adults is correct. And I know some of you guys are like, what? A gallon? That's crazy. Um, basically a 175 pound adult should be drinking anywhere from like 96 to 128 ounces per day uh, that's actually correct the eight glasses a day is just because nobody even drinks that right they're trying to help you drink more water but the proper would be 50% of your body weight in ounces so if I weigh 150 pounds that's 75 ounces so you can modify this question right how many ounces of water you drink based on your weight okay so if you are 170 to 200 pounds you should be drinking 128 ounce you know a gallon per day so that would give you 10 points and again you can modify this if you are 150 pounds and you're drinking 75 ounces a day that would be 10 points okay so again you can modify this one based on your weight um, but again we're basing it off of a 175 pound or more person so 112 ounces you get nine points 96 ounces eight points 80 ounces seven points 64 six points uh, 84 or 48 ounces five points 32 ounces four points 16 ounces and this is from you know if you're drinking anything other than water it doesn't count so water okay if you're drinking only 16 ounces of water per day you get three eight ounces of water per day you get two zero ounces um, you just give yourself zero okay it has one point on there but you can take that one point if you don't drink any water it's pretty bad okay question number four <laughs> okay um, how many servings of fruits and veggies do you eat per day okay so interestingly enough to be healthy a total of 13 to 15 servings per day is is what you should be getting um, one serving equals one cup or the size of your fist so that's a way to kind of gauge what you're eating and again you can combine fruits and veggies so if you're eating like six fruits and, and again some of you guys have this weird idea that fruits are bad for you because they're sugar uh, they're not <laughs> uh, I know it, it's like we, we, we kind of gotten into this route of like oh it messes with our glycemic index and it's it's really fruits are not bad for you okay we have to kind of understand they're from they're from nature they're not processed uh, so again I mean there's all sorts you guys could you can find research on that one too but okay so 15 or more you're gonna get 10 points 13 9 points 10 servings 8 points 
If you eat eight servings, seven. And some of you guys juice, and that counts. Like, I'll put two big, huge clumps of spinach into my Vitamix, and part that's part of my servings, right? That would be two servings. Uh, so eight is seven points. Five servings would be six points. Four servings would be five points. Three servings would be four points. Two servings, three points. One serving, two points. And if you don't get any, just no points. Um, how many prescription medications are you on? So now we're on question number five. So if you're on zero prescription meds, you're going to give yourself 10 points. If you are on one prescription medication, again, don't go off your prescription, okay? But they are highly acidic in most cases. And so just consult your doctor about this. But if you are on one, give yourself eight points. If you are on two, give yourself six points. If you're on three, give yourself four points. If you're on four, give yourself um, two points. And if you have five or more, give yourself one point. Okay, here's our coffee question, <laughs> okay? How many cups of coffee do you drink per day? All right, again, coffee is highly acidic, messes with your endocrine system, lowers your immunity. So if you drink zero cups of coffee per day, give yourself 10 points. If you drink one cup of coffee per day, you're gonna give yourself seven points. If you drink two cups per day, give yourself five points. If you drink three cups, give yourself three. If you drink four cups or more, give yourself one point. Okay. How many alcoholic beverages do you drink per week? So one, two, three, four, five, six. We're on question number seven, okay? How many alcoholic beverages do you drink per week? So if that's like a glass of wine a day, you're gonna count those, right? Uh, if it's maybe on the weekends and you have one glass of wine or two glasses of wine, fine. So what we're gonna do is zero. If you don't drink alcohol of any kind, you're gonna give yourself 10 points. If you drink one alcoholic beverage per week, you're gonna give yourself eight points. If you drink two per week, you're gonna give yourself seven points. If you drink three alcoholic beverages per day, and oh, by the way, the coffee, yes, if it's decaf, you count it, okay? All right, so if you drink three alcoholic beverages per week, you're gonna give yourself six points. If you drink four, you're gonna give yourself five points. If you drink five alcoholic beverages per week, you're gonna give yourself four points. Six will give you three points. Seven per week gives you two. Eight plus gives you one, okay? All right, so we are on question number eight. How many packs of cigarettes do you smoke a day? And that would include like cigars, all right? Um, cigarettes just lower your immunity. They're, we all know they're not healthy for you. Some of you smoke. Some of you don't, we get it. It's just whoever, whatever you guys are doing here. So if you smoke zero packs a day, you're gonna give yourself 10 points. I'm sorry, yeah, packs, because you guys smoke packs, right? I don't smoke, so I don't know. <laughs> okay, we, we did the whole study on how to, how to kind of communicate these points. Okay, if you smoke one pack a day, you're gonna give yourself five points. If you smoke two packs a day, you'll give yourself three points. And if you smoke three or more packs a day, give yourself one point, all right? Uh, and if you're just joining, watch the replay. Uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be easy for you to understand. How many sodas? So this is question number nine. How many sodas or filler drinks? Like even iced tea, right? This they, you can't count that as a water. Even like organic herbal tea, right? How many sodas or filler drinks? Like eight ounces of filler drinks? Do you drink per day? Um, juices, teas, whatever. Okay. Um, if you're Vitamix juicing a meal, that's a little different, okay? So that's a liquid, but it's not, you can't really call that a drink because it's full of actual good stuff for you. So again, we're talking about processed juices, like orange juice is processed. Uh, milk, you know, some of you guys are drinking a glass of milk or you're drinking teas or uh, sodas, any of that stuff. Okay, if you zero and you're all water, give yourself 10 points. If you drink one filler drink per day, like a Diet Coke or any of that, you're gonna give yourself seven points. Uh, two, like you have two teas or you know juice in the morning and tea in the afternoon, you're gonna give yourself five. So two filler drinks per day gives you five points. Three filler drinks per day gives you three points. And then four or more filler drinks per day gives you one point, okay? Um, and again, I wouldn't count um, kombucha, it, it, you know, it's just, that's sort of like uh, if you were drinking, say, an apple cider vinegar shot, you know. But if you're drinking kombucha all the time, that would be a filler drink. So that, and you really shouldn't be doing that anyway. So if you're just doing that once, or even like a ninja, that's not considered a filler drink. A filler drink would be a full, like your eight ounces, and that's part of your hydration, right? Um, okay. How many pounds, so number 10, how many pounds away from, you, from your goal weight are you? Now again, 
you need to check online what healthy weight would be for your body. So your body, like height, age, all that stuff matters. So figure that out. Um, it's usually lower than you think. Okay, usually we, uh, you know, obese, you'd be kind of surprised, like how close to obesity some of you are and you think you're fine. <laughs> okay, so your goal weight in your own mind might not be what a healthy goal weight is. So I need you to go online and check your height, your age, all that stuff, and figure out like what your goal weight should be. Okay, um, zero, if you're zero pounds away, meaning you're at your goal weight, you get 10 points. If you're five, five pounds away from your goal weight, give yourself nine points. If you're 10 pounds away from your goal weight, give yourself eight points. If you're 15 pounds away from your goal weight, give yourself seven. 20 pounds away would give you six. 25 pounds away gives you five. If you're 30 pounds away from your goal weight, you're gonna give yourself four points. If you're 35 pounds away from your goal weight, give yourself three. 40 gives yourself two. If you're 45 or more pounds away from your goal weight, and not your personal goal weight, goal weight, remember it's what you should be weighing, right? From a medical perspective, give yourself one point. Um, okay, so now you're just gonna add up all those. It's 10 sections, so this will be sort of funny for you because you'll get maybe 79, 82, 65, you know, you'll get any number of points. So <clears throat> add them all up and you'll get that total number of points. You don't have to tell them, you don't have to say them, okay? And again, that's fine. If your goal weight is lower than other people, that's totally fine. That is on you. So I'm answering a few questions as we go. You just figure out what your goal weight. It's based on poundage away. And if you're super, super, you know, I don't want you justifying anything. This, just be honest with this test. <clears throat> it's, a, it's important, okay? Uh, because if you're kind of trying to justify like, well, I only drink a quarter cup of coffee and it's organic, I'm going to not count that at all. Count it as one cup, okay? I'm not kidding. Like, be as honest with yourself as you can, <laughs> okay? All right, here's what we're gonna do. You have your points now, and I'm gonna read to you the different things, okay? So, if you are in the 80 to 100 point range, so if you scored 80 to 100 points, you're doing great, all right? I want you to keep up the good work. Uh, your body has a really good foundation to actually accept oils and other supplements and other things that are healthful for you. Uh, you're probably not too acidic. Um, and <clears throat> what's interesting is you'll see that certain oils will work actually very efficiently for you. Uh, the thing is, um, what I want you to do is just continue on that path. You can look if you want to, if you're in the 80 to 100, if you got 80, you can look at any any number that you scored lowest on, pick the one that you scored lowest on and just consider maybe upping that a little bit, right? Because I know you, if you're in the 80 to 100, you're like really focused on health <laughs> and you're probably gonna wanna tighten your ship even more. Don't be obsessed with it, but know that you can take one of those 10 items and kind of help it. Like if you're not getting good sleep, consider going to bed an hour earlier, help your body get into a better rhythm, all right? All right. If you are in the 65, and don't brag, I see some of you guys post, posting your points and you're bragging. <laughs> Good job, you should be like proud of yourself, but for sure, you know, don't brag. Because <laughs> some people aren't doing so good, okay? Uh, all right, so if you're in the 65 to 79 points, which many of you probably fall in that range, you're doing all right, okay? You're actually doing okay. Uh, but you could use some improvement in some some areas. And so that's what I want you to do is consider looking at one or even two areas to tighten the ship. I want you to figure out what two areas you could start working on now. Or even just start with the one and then next month start with the second one. Just, it's, it's like knowledge is power when you know you have these things that you should be working on. Um, your body's gonna really love you for it. So just do it, I promise you. It's gonna be a big, big change. Um, and honestly, every person I've ever talked to who's tried my coffee challenge has thanked me for it, <laughs> okay? It's rough, but it's an easy thing to do. If that's not easy for you, don't do it, okay? Leave that, leave that on there for you guys. Okay, here's the thing. Like oils and supplements and products will work well for you, but um, sometimes they won't. And they have to actually, what's interesting is you have a slight acidity in your body and it's, those oils are gonna have to do a little extra work to clean up 
right? Like they actually have to clean up before they can work. And so that's where we want to make sure that we're doing the best we can to allow things to work well, especially if you're stressed out. If you f got the 65 to 79 point range, but you are dealing with a high level of stress, that is actually going to be blocking a ton of stuff. And we didn't ask that. That could be like an 11th bonus point question. But um, your stress levels, you've got to reduce them. So that would mean if you're dealing with stress on any of these, I want you to focus on that first. Okay, getting your stress under control, meaning I need you to start meditating more, praying more, sitting alone in a quiet environment more, going on walks more with quietness, calm your mind down. You know, don't fill it. I know some of you guys have to fill it with music and fill it with activity. You need, your body is, is begging you to just take a, take a beat, okay? <laughs> All right. Um, so I would encourage you to maybe try alkaline. If you're in that 65 to 79 point range, we just want to start increasing our, our alkalinity in our body as well. Okay, if you fall in the 50 to 64 point, um, you need to up your game, girl. <laughs> okay, and if there's some boys on here, same thing with you. It's real important. Um, you have a handle on some things, right? Some of them you scored real high, but other areas you've got problems, like some real problems. And so that means, again, looking at two or three of these and, and tackling stress, tackling those things. We're going to get into how you can actually tackle those things a little bit better. But you also might consider um, alkaline, and you might even consider thyramin, okay? So that's going to help your endocrine system and help with some energy levels and help get your mind in a p position to make changes. Many of us that fall in the 50, you know, 60 to below, you're going to start having a hard time because you're mentally not there. So getting on Ninja Nitro that has small amounts of caffeine in it, again, we don't want to overdo that. Don't do that every single day. Um, but if you're trying to go off ca caffeine, that's a real good one because it's from the cocoa bean. It's a little bit different type of caffeine, but it's going to help those, that tanked energy because Again, when your energy is so tanked, and thyromin is really good for energy as well, it's just going to help you like get through it, okay? And the emotional state that you might go through when you're changing things. So alkaline, really good thing to do as well. <clears throat> okay, uh, we want to support the, the metabolism, okay, and your energy levels. All right, so if you scored like 49 or below, right, um, you got a lot of work to do, <laughs> okay? Don't be depressed, though. You can do this. Fill yourself with, um, fill your, your like environment with friends and supportive people. Uh, get on some chat groups, get into some actual, like, you want to, you need to be around people. This is a big thing. Uh, basically, essential oils, and this is where it gets fascinating, they will help you a lot, but not in the way you think they should. They're actually attacking more things, so they will maybe excite you. You may end up with more detox than you're used to. Um, on a continual basis, right? So um, there's going to be a lot of things just that you're going to need to work on, and I give you a big long list here, but I want you to take a look at some of the many Young Living um, supplements because our supplements have, like, they don't have all of the stuff that would cause acidity. They have things from nature. Everything is derived from nature. Everything is not extracted in a way that you would think. It, they're actually like whole, whole nutrition, whole herbs, things that are actually going to help support your alkalinity. And so, um, for sure, we're going to get you moving in the right direction by just changing your lifestyle habits one thing at a time, okay? So again, don't overwhelm yourself. But um, this is the Vitality Life Health Analysis, okay? So if you love this and want to get these for classes, you can get them on 35, 30, 35, 31oils.com uh, slash inserts. And that's going to give you these inserts, which are very helpful. Plus, it's going to give you the um, supplement schedule, which is helpful as well. So you know kind of when to take things. Okay, so moving forward, though, those are things that you know you can kind of work through. I'm going to give you some very easy tips and tricks on what you can do to make your life actually easier and better without doing much work. And I think that's probably... When I talk to anyone who's dealing with multiple layers of issue, that's their biggest thing. They want an easy answer. So can I give you an easy answer? Like, are you guys interested in an easy answer? Because I know that that is, that's just the, you know, I can sit here all day long and say, it's going to take work. And you're going to be like, eh, I'm just going to sit on my couch. <laughs> I can't do it. I feel you. I've been there. You guys, I was super overweight, depressed, tons of acne straight up crying every day, had bouts of manic depression, 
I'm talking like serious anger issues, like punching walls, you know, punching holes in walls issues. I There's so many things I could tell you that I, I totally relate, right? And everything I was doing to myself. And so when I cleaned up all of this stuff, I realized, wow, like, that's huge. So let's say you have a memory foam mattress, right? Because you're sleeping on that a good third of your life, right? For a third of your life, you're on that thing. And I know some of you guys don't have the money to replace it. I know some of you guys love it. It, it just, it cuddles you, right? So what I want to have you do is go and get a fully cotton um, topper, something that is going to at least block it somewhat, okay? So, and consider that too, like, some of those um, mattress toppers are waterproof. Well, that's plastic. It's more plastic, okay? So you want to find a fully organic um, material like cotton or linen topper that's maybe thicker. Make sure there's zero plastics in it, zero fire retardants. All that stuff cannot be in it. Fire retardants are huge endocrine disruptors. And so by just putting that... Um, like maybe down filled topper some of you guys are allergic so get like something that's maybe just cotton filled is going to give you some um, barrier it's not great but it's better <laughs> okay so that's a, a quick solution on how to how to kind of like barrier yourself uh, the other thing is just take a look around your home for all the things that could be causing endocrine disrupting, right? And so if I were going to just look at um, statements from, say, EWG, right? Basically, they're stating that, you know, they, they tested 52, they pro tested 72 products, and out of the 52 of them, this is a little bit scary to me, so I'm going to read this to you guys because this is, this is, this is nuts. Um, oops, I lost it here, of course. Okay, so basically out of all of these that were tested, the 70, like 70, what is it? Sorry, 52 of the 72 products, um, these are including deodorants, fragrances, hair gels, you know, sprays, lotions, all of this stuff contained massively endocrine disrupting, like, products like really bad for you and what I mean by that is they actually are causing your hormones to go haywire and that's a lot that's too many right so if you just take a quick look around your house and find out what are the things that are causing this like your makeup your makeup is so toxic your head will spin like straight up your makeup has lead in it most lipsticks have lead in it. They found 99% of all lipsticks have lead in it. You've got, um, and these are all endocrine disruptors that we know, right? So the, the actual um, biggest issue is the things that keep them from going bad, right? So they need to have those, those chemicals in there that are going to help keep the shelf life of your products lasting longer. The other thing is they're using plastic containers that leach into the actual products themselves. And so they're causing major like reproductive issues, uh, just cellular damage, cellular reproductive, reproductive issues, all of your endocrine glands just jacked from this. So it's not that because you're using one shampoo or one body lotion, it's that you're layering all of these personal care products on top of each other. And so while one night might not kill you, the multiples that you're putting on every day are. And, and that's where it gets very fascinating because honestly, you're not gonna see it, right? You're not gonna see that your early death was from all this. But what you will see is the fact that you're exhausted all day long, the fact that you're, um, you can't sleep at night, you can't wake up at night, you have brain fog, your, your body is not removing weight even if you're exercising and eating well. All of that is endocrine system. So I have had many people tell me that just simply going off coffee, their metabolism has now woken up and they started losing weight. Like, hello, <laughs> right? So if I look at the multiple layers of umbrellas, right? I, I give this analogy of there's all these helpful things, right? You have a, your body, your physical body is potentially jacked, okay? And you're trying to give it like buckets of water, to put out the fire. So let's say your body is a whole forest and your entire body is like on fire. 
and you understand what I'm talking about that like multiple areas of issues <clears throat> from emotions to you know we talked about all this and maybe your doctor has prescribed something as like to help you so that could be a bucket of water uh, maybe you're trying to eat better so you're adding that as buckets of water to help your your system uh, you have decided I'm gonna try essential oils so that could be a bucket of water uh, you're trying to kind of like exercise more so there's your bucket of water so you're, you're doing everything that you think is right but what's very fascinating is you've got umbrellas all over the place blocking those buckets and those umbrellas are your endocrine disruptors that you're putting on your body in your body and you're around at home okay so again I'm gonna give you an easy answer here and this might not be easy for some of you but I want you just to go around your house and Take an audit of all the stuff in your home, do a home audit, figure out, is my couch super old and does it have like fire retardants all over it? Okay, that might not be something easy to replace, um, but there are some other easy things like, do you go swimming a lot and do you use those plastic blow up toys? Stop using them. Honestly, those are so toxic. Those are so toxic. You can smell it when it comes out You're just filling your body with endocrine disruptors right when you smell that stuff uh, like the plastic sheet in your In your shower they have fabric ones get that one instead They will totally do the job the same way. It's just that plastic sheet is endocrine disrupting um, Again go through all of your cleaning supplies check out what you have every single cleaning supply even if it claims natural Look at the back. Re go that one sentence deeper. Read the instructions. Read what is ingredients in there and see the ingredient list. And if you can't pronounce some of those words, those are typically chemicals, like synthetic chemicals that are really bad for you. Read the whole label. Sometimes you'll see the label will say store in a container somewhere. Like you're supposed to actually keep that from leaching into your air. So generally speaking, if you can't get rid of your cleaning supplies, you need to put them in an airtight container in your garage, okay? They're so toxic, you are not allowed to throw those away. If you threw out all of your cleaning supplies into the trash, you'll probably get a fine from the city if they catch you. That's how bad these things are, right? So can you somehow get rid of all of those? You should. Uh, because they have uh, the EPA did a 15 year study and found that 50 you know women who work from home are 54 percent more likely to die from cancer than women who don't work from home so go throughout your whole house and see what you can get rid of uh, and then go throughout everything right you go like get rid of it and then swap it and what I mean by swap it is Figure out what products you can actually buy that make the most sense. And so for me, I have swapped everything out with Young Living products. Uh, I have decided to stop buying everything at Target and Costco and all of that stuff. Eat Ulta, my makeup, everything. I've swapped everything out. It's a big difference. I'm talking a very easy thing to do. And I'm going to tell you right now, and I'm going to promise you this, it's cheaper. I used to not think so. I used to be like, oh, it's so expensive to swap all this stuff out with like expensive stuff. You guys, this stuff lasts way longer. You don't use as much of it. I will, I would pay double. I would pay double what Young Living is charging for their products. And you want to know why I would? Not only is it cheaper and it works better because I know like dollar for dollar it looks more expensive. But remember, they're highly concentrated so you're using them differently. Honestly, I'd pay more. The reason I would pay more is because the simple act, right? If you want a quick, simple, rip the band-aid off answer, this is it. The simple act of throwing out, getting rid of <clears throat> all of the products that were endocrine disruptors, right? Shampoo, lotion, face stuff, makeup, everything, everything. I'm not kidding. Everything is Young Living, <laughs> okay? All of my cleaning supplies, dishwasher detergent, dish soap, hand soap, right? Like laundry detergent, the cleaner, the spray cleaner, mouthwash, deodorant, toothpaste, all of it gone. I, I used to spend around $1,000 a month, anywhere from $500 to $1,000 a month at, at um, tr uh, uh, Target. So many different stores, right? I don't spend that anymore. 
I spend $300 a month at Young Living and it's perfect <laughs> and I I sometimes don't even spend that some months it's a hundred bucks and I'm floored at my savings I'm floored at how much I'm saving so it's an actual easier switch than you think and taking all of your products that are bad for you out and some of you guys are not convinced some of you guys think no my Windex is fine you guys it's not it's it's killing you and it's not that that is killing you it's that all combined they're killing you all combined all of these endocrine disrupting things are making you tired and fat and depressed okay that is the reality of it and if you don't believe me keep doing what you're doing right I can't change you but here's what will change here's what changed me because I straight up didn't care for myself I'm like whatever like Go ahead and tell me that's a carcinogen. Like, I don't care. Like, I really didn't. I remember saying that to a friend of mine. She was like, you realize that's a carcinogen and you're, like, drinking it. I'm like, so? Like, who are you to tell me what to do? I, I get it. Like, I don't want to be told what to do, nor do you. What was really um, the thing that got me was my kid. The moment I started even considering having a child, I woke up. Because it's not about you. And... and I get it we are self-consumed individuals like that's you're the you're the person you know the most <laughs> you know what I mean like that's we can be nothing but self-consumed because that's all we know constantly 100% of the time but when I think about my child and the damage that the items in my home the things that he's putting on and in his body are doing to his little endocrine system and how I am setting him up for a life of success, whereas before, if I kept down the path that I was going, I would be setting him up for a life of failure, a life of sleep depravity, a life of obesity, a life of m being made fun of because of the massive acne, right? We found out that straight up, high fructose corn syrup causes him acne, that's his body, right? So he doesn't get it anymore, right? And anytime he has acne, we always laugh at him and say, what did you eat at school? Like, what did you get your hands on? And he's like, I know, right? <laughs> but he knows. And I want him to make choices. We are not a household that is like, ri like rigid. I, I want him to make choices. I want him to learn this stuff. But at the same time, I'm not interested in killing him because of, you know, petrochemicals surrounding him. I can do my part by eliminating all of the toxins in our home that would mess up his growth. I don't want his growth patterns to be jacked. I don't think you guys want that for your kids either. I don't want his focus at school to be messed up. So all of this is not necessarily about you. And for me, that was the shift. That was what made me choose, okay, I'm out. I'm out of all of this duping. I'm out of all of the government and products just duping me. So I don't want you to be duped either. I don't want your pets to get sick. Did you know that your pets are more like babies than they are adults? Meaning their systems are more susceptible. And I see it all the time. I, I see it all the time with dogs. And, and if, dogs and cats where you, they've got like congenital issues, right? And you're thinking, but are they? Like they're, they're in pain. Some of your dogs are in pain. And I'm wondering, are is this because of all of the stuff because they live full-time in your house right they're like the women 54 percent more likely to die from cancer women who work from home uh how, what do you think is that's doing to your pets <laughs> right so do it for your dog do it for your cat do it for your children do it for your grandchildren you know i'm not interested in my kids staying with my mom like 24 7 because she did she's not on board with this I love my mom but she still has like total full toxins in her home and I've talked to her about it but you know she's old school and that's okay I'm never gonna convince somebody you have to convince yourself and so for me it's sort of like okay so it's not gonna kill him for a week I'd rather him spend time with his grandma but man like it's a, it's a little nerve-wracking for me honestly uh, and, and I'm not psycho <laughs> right? so so I just, I want you guys to consider what are the areas you can control, right? It, it might not be coffee, keep your coffee. It might not be your mattress, keep your mattress. But a very easy switch for so many, a very high percentage of endocrine disrupting issues 
would be straight up switching out your products. Your cleaning supplies, your makeup, and your personal care products. A very easy, very easy thing to do. So, I encourage you to sign up with Young Living if you aren't already. I encourage you to get on Essential Rewards and create a three-month switch out program. You're going to spend about $300 a month to get everything switched out, and it's going to be for three or four months, and you're going to work with your enroller to decide what's the most important thing for you to swap out, where do you want to get started, but I'm going to promise you, even though that's an upfront $300, you think, what? You're going to save that because I want you to stop buying everything else. Stop buying makeup, stop buying skincare regimen stuff from Target, stop, you know, or Costco or wherever you buy stuff. Stop buying all the stuff that you used to buy. And I promise you, you're going to start seeing how interesting it is because you'll make that $300 purchase and that stuff's going to last you quite a bit, quite a bit of time rather than constantly going back to repurchase things each month, okay? So if you're not convinced, just try one thing. Start one thing, okay? The other thing I wanted to announce to you guys, which is really important, some of you guys are really excited about moving forward, is that I'm doing um, free coaching sessions with people who purchase the 24 book pack. So we have what's called a 24 book pack of this book here. So Vitality Life, this is Vitality, the Young Living Lifestyle. If you're trying to figure out how to switch out all of this stuff, how to actually do this correctly, it's all in this book. Okay, and it's going to help you understand the science behind things, how to use things, how it all works, and this is going to be very helpful for you. So the best deal you can get is 20, a 24 book team pack. If you don't have a team, ask around and see who wants to go in together because here's what you guys will get. Let's say 24 of you guys decided to go in together and you all lived in the same area and you wanted to do like a book club. You could buy that 24 book pack and I would do an actual session with the 24 of you together. We would do like a Zoom call and we can just chat it out and see what you guys need help with. Uh, or we can do a Facebook Live session for your team. But the cool thing is doing the 24 book pack gets you multiple inserts. So not only are you getting the two vitality uh, inserts, the supplement schedule, the test, the allergen guide, you're also getting, and I of course didn't bring it up here, you're also getting the company comparison chart. So that's that brand comparison chart so you can really see the difference between um, different brands. And you're going to be getting that 55 oil usage guide chart. That one's super helpful for so many people. Plus, all your books will be signed. So it's a super really good value because you're getting them for only $12.50 per book. And each each book gets $500 worth of freebies, over $500, okay? So you're getting into our freebie group, and um, we're going to do a video coming up here soon about those freebies so you can really understand them, but it's a little crazy how much, how much in free stuff you're getting. So if you're dying for more recipes, you're going to get a free recipe ebook that comes included with this, okay? It's so cool. So that's a $300 pack that's getting you over $12,000 with the free stuff. Like, hello. It's a little bit crazy. And I know that people think like, no, that seems a little bit too good to be true. It's not. I'm the queen of giving free stuff. I love giving as much value to you as possible. If you're like, well, I don't need 24 books and I just want one, you can actually go to 31oils.com slash vitality. And that's going to give you a one book price and you're gonna get $504 worth of freebies. So you're gonna get all the freebies as well, just minus me talking with you one-on-one because -on -one, I wouldn't be able to have time to do that. But you're gonna get into that freebie group, okay? So it's super, super fun. I hope this has been helpful for you guys. It was a little bit over an hour talk, so lots to discuss, but this is my heart. This is where I feel like this is the most important thing. Um, I, I hope some of you guys can tell your friends when they watch this to go ahead and just download it. You know, you guys, I don't know if you know this, but you can download videos from Facebook. I'm gonna load this to YouTube, uh, but they can just listen to me. They can go on an hour long walk and just listen, right? I think that's probably the easiest way, or if you're on a long car ride, some of you guys have commutes, you don't have to watch me, <laughs> okay? You just you just need to listen. And so share this with your friends, um, let them know this is a real important talk for them to, to just listen to, to get on board with, to figure out what they can do better with. Now, of course, they can't write things down while they're driving, but um, they can go back to that part. Okay, so thank you guys. And so yeah, the 24 books and the free session with me, uh, if you go to 31oils.com slash vitality team, 
That is a team bundle pack that you guys can get. And if you are itching to get that, just know, get it soon. Uh, because we only have a hundred of those available. So, uh, and we've already sold a bunch. So we launched that yesterday uh, with just an email. Uh, so this is the first time I'm sharing it with you guys live. Uh, and some of you guys will want that. Just know, if you wanted a 20 minute session with me one on one, it's $250. So for an extra 50 bucks, you're getting 24 books, right? Plus the ability, the ability to sell those. So no, you could just have them and then resell them to friends at 15 bucks a book and you could make a profit. Like, I love that, right? You could do what you want, but the list price is $15.99. So, um, and each book gets a freebie set indefinitely. So each book will get that freebie group set. You can always get into that freebie group with a book. So if you have a book, you can get into that group. But um, you need to email vitalitybook at gmail.com. Some of you guys are like, wait, wait, I have the book and I don't, I'm not in that group. Uh, just email your receipt, which would be on Amazon or through PayPal. There's a PayPal receipt through 31 Oils or an Amazon receipt. Just look in your Amazon account or your PayPal account to get the receipt. Just do a screen grab of it. You can, I've had people even take a picture with their phone and email that in. And you're going to email it to vitalitybook at gmail.com. Uh, and you'll be good. You'll get an email back with instructions on how to get into that freebie group, and it's super, super fun. All right. I hope that this was fun for you guys. I know. I know. I was like, anybody interested in doing the 24-pack? You guys can go in together. I, I, we just can't drop ship to people, so it's just one box you're going to get. Uh, so figure out where you guys live, and um, yeah, I don't care if you guys go in together. <laughs> figure it out. So uh, that's it. Thanks, you guys, and we will um, see you soon. Again, this was one of the longer videos. Sorry about that, uh, but there's a lot to talk about and a lot, uh, you know, just a lot going on. So watch the replay. Okay, bye, guys.